just feel as though I need to introduce myself as Helen's mother and Rob's mother-in-law. For all the people who think that they might want to listen to this podcast, I feel that I should just warn you all that the language could be foul. And if you are of a sensitive disposition like me, just be aware, please. Uh, I just thought I should warn you. Baby. What are you doing? Well, it's a Robin Helen date night podcast. Uh, I'm not uh, this is a theme tune. Boom. <laughs> what are those noises? Mm. Come on. Oh. We drop the kids to school at nine and pick them up at three. How many times? It's three fifty. We're in the day together doing some uh, activity. <laughs> well, What's that? And then we're gonna mix oh, sweet love. Yeah. Uh. My mum might listen to this. Oh. Well, welcome to Rod and Night Night Podcast Live. <laughs> We're recorded as live, although this is going to be recorded in sections, but not edited, so seemingly as live. Uh, a, se- a selection of live situations brought to you in succession on the podcast. Podcast. <laughs> How are you, dear listener? You're overexcited. I am overexcited. I'll tell you why I'm overexcited. Because somebody has just been taking pictures of my wife's chest. <laughs> oh, yes. Helen's been having some photographs taken of her chest, haven't you, Helen? Yeah. Yes. You want to tell the listeners why? Well, I've just been for a chest x-ray, Rob. After, you have. After much badgering from you. Yeah. Um, I've, uh, I've, been, I've been to the hospital. Finally got her to get a photo shoot done of her chest. <laughs> um, Albeit an x-ray. I know. Uh, can they see your boobs on the x-ray? Oh, I should imagine they can, yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get a printout. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop it on the podcast page. No, I won't. I won't, for reasons of confidentiality. Um, but, uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, uh, super listener Greg did suggest that if Helen left her cough unattended, it could become bacterial and it could move on to her chest. Yeah, which... which it seems, Greg, it did. So I went to the doctors last week, on your advice, Gregory, and uh, the doctor... Why don't you and Greg just get a room? <laughs> Why don't the... you just move in with each other? And the doctor gave me some antibiotics, which I've now completed, but I'm still a bit wheezy. Very so... interestingly, she takes Greg's advice, but not mine. But they, so they sent me for a chest X-ray, which we thought, dear listener, we were going to be waiting in, an, in a stretched... NHS waiting room for hour upon hour. We thought we were going to record this podcast live from the hospital, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I never thought that was going to happen because I thought for confidentiality reasons that wouldn't have occurred. <laughs> well, I thought we were going to find a quiet place and record a podcast listener from the hospital. But what happened was unbelievable, wasn't Incredible, it? Incredible, yeah, unprecedented. So by the time <coughs> Rob had parked well, the car... By the time car, I parked the ruddy car... By the time he'd parked the ruddy car in the ruddy, expensive... A car park. Yep. Um, I'd been in and out. She'd been in and out. She's had a she's had uh, she's had a photograph taken off her chest. It was unbelievably <laughs> incredible. Efficient. I I mean I have, I can't. I'm in shock. Well, I've always been a massive fan of the NHS, and I doff my hat to every single person working in there. The lady who told me which way I needed to walk in was very very helpful. Very helpful. I said, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be a patient. You're not being a pain. It's our job to help. And I thought, immediately I'm in safe hands. But that does not mean, just because Helen got seen quickly, that the NHS is not being systematically destroyed no, by this government. No. Let that not be... No, no, of course not. But it was... Uh, honestly, the moment my bottom hit the purple waiting room chair, I was up again and in. In for your in, important into photo my shoot. Gown, yeah. Into your gown, Now, can you talk me through what you had to wear? I had to uh, wear a gown. Did you have to disrobe completely? <coughs> no, I didn't have to take my trousers. Okay, yeah, that would good. be weird for a chest that x-ray. Would be weird. You might have done that. No, I wouldn't have done that. You'd just strip <laughs> off totally. No, and then yeah, it was just incredibly efficient. So yeah. we'll see. But um, and now, what are we doing? We're uh, in the car. So basically, Rob. By the time Rob didn't even get to the purple waiting room, did you? I didn't get to the purple waiting I room. Intercepted and that's not Rob a euphemism either. <laughs> on my way. <laughs> Back down towards the car park. I you didn't even get to where I was. I can't believe how quick it was. Well, let's hit. Let's have a round of applause for our NHS. Um, and then, so we're now back in the car, 
and we're in the car park. But I'm a bit... Rob started recording, but I'm aware that we've paid for our car parking and now we're sitting here chatting and we might get locked in the car park. Possibly. If we don't leave well, within we... a certain time. OK, right, so I'll turn the recorder off and we'll speak to you from another location on our incredible adventure of a day. <laughs> uh, what was the name of the photographer? Can you say who took the photographs? Ellen. Ellen. Alan, yeah. wonderful. Student. Student. Student doctor. Wonderful. Tremendous. Well, thank you, Alan, for taking pictures of my wife's chest. <laughs> We're in car park number two. Car park number two of our multi-story, multi-level... Adventure. Adventure. Here's a question for you. Are cars getting bigger, Helen, or, and dear listener, or are car parking spaces getting smaller? Well, we just couldn't fit in that tiny space just we then, Robert. We just couldn't space. fit in that tiny space. But I do really do wonder, I mean, due to my chronic IBS, I... I I'm still I mean, relatively slim. There's another one. It's There's another one that we can't fit in. It's still up here. But um, if you were a larger person, yeah. when you park your car, how on earth do you get out of it? Because there's often, like, you have to just kind of get your body sideways and try and slide out of your car, don't you? Yeah. Without dinging the other one. If you're yeah. a bigger person, how on earth do you get out of your car? Well, bigger listeners, please... Send in your comments and let us know how you find car parking in multi-storey car parks. <laughs> Next on today's... <laughs> it's gone all very this morning, isn't it? <laughs> and what I'm doing... Oh, oops, I'm, I'm Rob's just... just bumped into the um, the wall and now he's come forward a little bit. There we go. I was about to do an impression of Dr Chris Steele examining someone's testicles on this morning. <laughs> I remember tuning in when I was a student and just uh, and him just cupping a man's testicles at 11 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just new, and now I'm examining the area around the, the testicles. I'm just checking checking around the scrotum as well. <laughs> All we at go. 11 o'clock in the morning. There we go. So, what's next on our magical mystery car park tour round? Well, we're going to get out of the car park, Helen, aren't we? And, uh, are we, we are going to visit another car park today, though, aren't we? Oh, hopefully. Surely. Hopefully. This is our second which car is, park of the day. Which has been your favourite? Uh, I think this one, so far. Really? Yeah, although... Even, it, even the small spaces. The small spaces, but what we've done is we're on the top floor here on level 5A and we've looked out. There are spaces <laughs> on either side, so... Uh, we're all right now, yeah. I'll be able to heave you out to the passenger side door with ease. Yeah. Won't I? <laughs> yeah. Um, OK, so I, I think I preferred car park number one. The NHS car park. Yeah. 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 It was harder to park in. Was it? I see I got out, didn't I? You got so out. So I can't comment, really. You just left me. You click bird me, just left me to deal with it. Well, I didn't realise. Like to... I, I didn't realise. Well, you were in a rush to go and get your breasts photographed, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my chest photo. I have an important photo shoot. <laughs> I must away. You park, you park the car. Just ditch it. <laughs> I have an important photo shoot. So what are we doing now, Robert? Should we tell the listeners? Would well, you want listeners? to tell them? You want to tell them? Oh, I'll tell them. All right. You tell them. So... For Christmas this year, yeah, um, it's fair to say. Is it fair to say that you had made the ultimate panic buy? No, <laughs> and, and, I, and I, I'll be honest. When I heard you over here, you say that to one of our friends over Christmas, I did feel a little bit hurt. Oh no, it's only a jokings. Uh, but there is, surely is an element of it that was a panic, isn't there? No, there's no panic. I actually got quite excited about it. No, no, I know. I know you got excited, and it's. A, I'm not taken away from how lovely it is. But was there not an element of, oh, fuck, what am I going to get her? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, but when I decided that, oh, oh, I'll do that, yeah, I got very excited about it. Yeah, no, I know you did. I got a hot flush. Did you? I did get a hot flush, oh, and well, I've you, sorted it out. You can buy me more. Um, <laughs> so, basically, essentially, what Rob did <laughs> well, was... bankrupted myself. Very romantically and very expensively. He bought me a diamond. Well, because I realised that we, ne I never, never, ever got Helen an engagement ring, Um our engagement, I seem to remember we were watching the telly, and uh, please excuse my language, but this was Helen's uh, exact language, and she does swear like a plasterer. And she turned to me, we were watching, I don't know, some crap on TV, and she said, uh, do you know what? If you died, I'd be absolutely fucked. <laughs> because we're, we weren't married. And yeah. um, and we realised in that incident, we talked through all of the... Uh, possibilities of one or other of us dying and leaving the other one in the lurch. You'd be fine. With the children. 
Apart from you'd have my student debt potentially. Uh, yeah, it could be landed with your student <laughs> debt. But uh, the and, and we just and we end up laughing about how unromantic all of the possibilities of um, divvying up. Yeah, going to a lawyer to sort out like what would happen if Rob died and who, who get who get this this shit car and all that kind of stuff. It felt incredibly tedious and like we weren't going to do them yes and then we realized that marriage yeah was well, a fun way of sorting all of that stuff out yeah we inextricably tricked ourselves into the institution of marriage thinking that that would be yeah maybe to think about what it would be like to try and stay together for the rest of your days <laughs> until you both die or um uh, to kind of continue talking about all the options if you split up or if you got divorced or, or you, sorry if you just split up and it felt inherently unromantic so we started laughing about that, and then and then I can't remember who suggested the idea if we got married. It's probably me, wasn't it? Being no, romantic. I don't know whether it was you actually. I think it was, but it was it was a, it was a very unromantic. Uh, it was a proposal that was made by like in a kind of practical <laughs> business like manner, wasn't it? Yeah, but then we did find it romantic afterwards. I think when we decided that we were going to do it, that we thought it was a great idea, didn't we? Yeah, it was a great idea. We just did it on our own, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, we were probably really pissed. <laughs> <laughs> really pissed, uh, you know, just drinking on the sofa, and uh, we came up. But then, anyway, so we we did it. We had a great. Uh, we got married in in private, which was fantastic. We had a great time, didn't we? Yeah. Then we had a big deal for the family, and then we had a party in the summer for our friends, and it was really, really great fun. But what I didn't do is get Helen and the Gosriam to ring, and Helen always joked that. I mean, look at this guy. Yeah, we just sorry, we just sat here. <laughs> Could this bike guy park any closer to us if he tried? <laughs> like there's, there's about nine spaces in between. Now we've us. got to watch him having trouble getting out of his car. Yeah, with my point proved exactly. <laughs> Not bump into our car. This absolute wazzock. Oh, bless him. Bless don't. him. Has pulled up right next to us. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just listen out for the dunk of his car door hitting ours. <laughs> Um, so many spaces, mate. So many spaces. Don't look at him. So many spaces. Shh, he can hear you. He it's only, it's oh, only yeah. a small piece of glass. Look, he's actually stuck. He's actually <laughs> stuck. Mate. Okay, so, um, so yes, Rob didn't buy me an engagement ring. No. So, this Christmas, how many years after our marriage? Uh, it's at least five, isn't six. it? Six. It'll be six in April. Yes, six years yeah. in April. Rob bought me an engagement ring. I did buy a an diamond. engagement ring. A because, diamond yes, ring. I always, whenever Rob says, can I get you anything from the shop? Or what would you like for tea? Or anything. I always say, a diamond. Just, just get me a diamond. <laughs> so I so, called the bluff. Finally, he bought me a diamond. And it was funny, wasn't it, on Christmas Day, because I didn't open my presents. No. Because there was a frenzy of present opening, which I thought was quite grotesque. Yes. And ugly and and consumerist and, and terrible. And I was finding it all quite uncomfortable. Yeah. Everyone just opening presents, holding onto presents, not really looking at presents. Like, it was just awful. So I didn't open anything. I just hoarded them. And didn't open them. And then and Rob was getting more and more anxious throughout the day, clearly because there was a bloody diamond in one of these packages. <laughs> and um, and he kept saying, why are you going? Shall we open our presents? And um, and I was like, oh, do later. I'm cooking right now. Just stop bullying me. And, um, and so we didn't open them till Boxing Day. Nope. But Rob was getting more and more wound up, and he could see that he was, I could see he was getting wound up. So I was wondering why he was being weird. Yeah. And my brother and sister in law were like wondering why you were being weird, <laughs> and we're like, just go off and get a room and open his present. He's like clearly quite intense about the present. <laughs> so anyway, we opened it on Boxing Day morning, didn't we? Yeah, just in, in bed with a cup of tea. Yeah, and it was that was a better way though. Underneath underneath the Dutch oven. But it was better than opening it like awkwardly it in front of my brother and sister. Then me having to drop to my knee and, and yeah. stuff dodge your finger. Yeah. But I didn't do that either, did I? I didn't slip. Maybe when we get it resized, I'll you do did. it. You did. You came to the side of the bed and, and got down on one knee. Did I? Yeah. You can do it again. It might, have just, it been it might have just been trap wind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an Alan Bennett comment. <laughs> oh, it's probably just trap wind. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyway, so now, a long story. Now we are off to the jewellers to get this ring resized. Because it's too big. Because it's too big. Yeah. Um, because he thinks I've got fat fingers. <laughs> because my wife's fingers are too dainty. <laughs> but yeah, our son, I was just telling um, Rob that our son, when I showed him the diamond um, on Boxing Day, uh, he said, our son said, oh, did he get it from H. Samuel? <laughs> I didn't. They were shut. <laughs> So uh, anyway, so we're off to the jewellers to get my ring grease eyes. And that is not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> See, they do that in there as well. I could get mine tightened a bit. 
so shall we um shall we cut off and maybe come back to the listeners in car pack number three okay <laughs> that's that's nine minutes of content <laughs> So, after a short break, I left Helen by the slow cookers in Atkinson's. I don't know if you know Atkinson's. Probably some of our listeners around the world are in London might not know what Atkinson's is. I don't it's really know what It's Atkinson's. a bit like Harrods, isn't it? But like in Sheffield. No, it's as far from Harrods as you can get. It's very like Harrods. It's a weird It's a different department. department. You can buy bras, you can buy those quilted coats those old ladies wear. It's the same price as like John Lewis, but it feels a little bit like TK Maxx. Yeah, TK Maxx again. I don't know if you have a TK Maxx where you are. It's like a, it's a bit like Harrods. <laughs> or TJ Hughes. Like Harrods. Or TJ Hughes. Very like Harrods. <laughs> uh, but uh, but you probably don't have them down south. It's like Harrods, basically. Um, but I left uh, my lovely wife uh, alone looking at the slow cookers for a while uh, because I had to pop to the lavatory. I've got a little bit of an upset stomach today, Helen. And I didn't want to be in the jewellers on the second most romantic day of my life thinking <laughs> I needed the toilet. <laughs> So I really appreciate that, that loving gesture. Thank you. What's the most romantic day? Well, our wedding day, of course. OK. Of course, I didn't need the toilet then. And this is the second most romantic the day? The second most romantic day of my is it, life. Is this it? Yes, I think okay. it is. All right, I'll remember that. I'll try and bear that in mind. There's Ann Summers there. There is an Ann Summers there. <laughs> Sell the diamond, we could buy a lot of things from the Ann Summers. <laughs> So you know how uh, life is just one great big algorithm on the internet now. So everything that you do is traced. Yeah. And I can tell if you've been using my Amazon Prime shopping account. Oh, or go on. has Amazon made some very strange assumptions about me that I don't understand? I just received an email from Amazon that I rifled through while I was on the lavatory at yeah. Atkinson's while you were waiting for me. And it says... Um, I don't know if you're still recording... Yeah, we are still recording. It says, Hello, Robert Rouse. We've picked a few styles we think you'll like based on your past purchases and preferences. Sorrel men's Falcon Ridge slippers. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. How on earth has that happened? Wow. They look good. So they're like they're like uh, suede slip-on fur-lined slippers. Yeah. And how on earth has it come to that conclusion? Because I've not shopped... For fur line slippers Maybe on they Amazon. Know you've just, can I just tell the listeners where we are? Where are we? Back in the car park. Oh, you're back in the car park. You've got to tell them what's going on. We're back in the bloody car park. Yeah, we're still, of course we're still in the car park. Maybe it knows you've just been in Atkinson's, and as soon as you've gone to Atkinson's, those kind of slippers come up on your feet. Do you think? Yeah. Or maybe is somehow Amazon listening to the podcast where we've talked about me having fur line Crocs and slippers that you bought from Aldi. I don't know if you know Aldi. Um, oh, for our listeners down south. <laughs> Aldi's like, uh, it's a bit like Harrods, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, I got up on my, you know, next to um, Facebook, it, it gives you like eBay, like, uh, check this out. Yeah. And it came up with some awful looking, nylon looking underwear, like some kind of baby doll, horrific nightdress thing. What I was haven't that on? been looking at those on bloody eBay. Really? So have you? No, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't buy them second hand. <laughs> I wouldn't buy. I wouldn't buy what's a, what essentially uh, sex clothes. <laughs> I wouldn't buy those second hands. Uh, would you? No, <laughs> no exactly. I wouldn't buy them first. They've, they've got to be box fresh, haven't they? Surely. But anyway, so no, I don't know where those slippers. I've not been looking. At, I'm not going to buy your slippers for your birthday. So you haven't been rifling around trying to yeah look thinking I'll get Rob a perfect pair of old man slippers. No, they look comfy. I don't think. Yeah, they do look comfy, but I don't know if I'm ready for that no, kind of I level of commitment to age. I won't. I won't. Yeah. It's his birthday coming up. He's starting to panic. He just thought <laughs> I was going to buy him a slow cooker, and now he thinks I'm buying him slippers. Oh, Helen did get me a very good Christmas present, though. Brilliant Christmas present. Yes. My favourite film, I think, in the whole wide world is Jaws. Helen got me a Have ticket. Told the listeners this. No. Oh, go on. A ticket to the live screening of Jaws with a full live orchestra underscoring the film. It's going to be good, that. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to be in hog heaven. I'll shit myself. You will shit yourself, won't you? Yeah. Have you, not seen, have you ever seen it? Yeah, I've seen Jaws and I shat myself. Did you? Yes. That was just in our living room without a full orchestra. And even even with, like, kind of the special effects being what they are, it's when the head, head comes out of the boat, isn't it? It doesn't take much for me to shit myself. No, it doesn't. 
I think we should probably move on. Yeah, let's go to car park number three. <laughs> Yay! We are rolling. Oh, hello. Hey, welcome Where back. Where are we, Rob? We're uh, in car park number three, which is um, a side street. Yes, we, we couldn't find a car park for you, dear yeah. listener. But we're, we are parked in the car in a new um, location. New location, location number three. I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> this is gold. Gold, absolute gold. <laughs> absolute <laughs> podcasting gold. <laughs> right. That's Helen's cough. That's why she had her photograph taken of her chest earlier. <laughs> Where are we, Rob? We are in Sheffield, just off Abbeydale Road. And what have we been doing? Uh, we've just been to a cafe. We have just been to a cafe. A cafe lunch. So we've been to an Italian deli cafe and had an Italian deli sandwich. Yes, we? it was very nice indeed. Which was very nice. And we even spotted a uh, oh, spotted famous person. A local famous person in there. Yes, it was very, very, very exciting. <laughs> uh, and um, you're looking very... Um, uh, what's I the feel word? an insult on the way. No, 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 no. Just when you were leaving that... Um, Fan- not fancy, was it? But it was like a cool cafe. Yeah, it was like it? a trendy cafe. A trendy cafe. Trendy cafe. And you yeah. have a very big beard. Well, I've got a very big beard on you. Yeah. Very big beard. And because new- well, because I, I, it's going to be shaved into the into my mutton chops for bottom, isn't it? Yeah. You start grow, yeah. But with that beard and your new Zara coat. Yes, which I got in the sale. You look like you should be coming out of a cafe in Shoreditch. Do I? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Is, well, that, is that a compliment? I, I don't know. <laughs> Are you, call, are you calling me a twat? No, I'm not calling you a twat. <laughs> what are they called, though, those beardy people? Oh, a hipster. Yes. A hipster. Like well, a hipster. I, and, I make, and I make sourdough bread. And you make sourdough bread, yeah. so yeah, you are definitely... In fact, our son's home economics teacher has asked for some of my sourdough starter, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, she has. Yeah, so she's heard it's very good. You're well known for being a twat around, yes. <laughs> <laughs> around our local area. I just can't afford the tattoos. No, you can't. You're too scared. All the big things that go in my You're ears. You're too scared to of needles and hygiene to deal bi- with the tattoos. Or the big holes that go in your ears. We, we did walk past, didn't we, a um, piercing shop yeah. in Sheffield. And there was an old lady walked straight out of it, didn't she? <laughs> and went to which Rob said she's just had a clip done, which was <laughs> totally inappropriate. <laughs> oh, I thought it was funny. Um, I could not say it. But, yeah, you have a problem with jewellery. With like piercings, I've never, don't you? Well, I, I don't. I've never had a piercing. I don't want a piercing. One of the funniest things was it. They make you willy itch. They make me, they make my willy itch. But one of the funniest things I have a memory of of you yeah. is when for your birthday somebody knew, obviously knew that you didn't like the idea of piercings. They and did. They bought you some like clip on facial piercings, didn't they? And you got covered. You had some on your lips. Yeah, all over my ears. Some on your eyebrows and on your nose yeah. and all over your ears. <laughs> and you looked the most uncomfortable I've ever <laughs> seen you. <laughs> Oh, that was my 40th birthday party. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so we've had lo- we've The ring is in for resizing. The ring is in for resizing. We've Helen's ring's lunch. being resized as we speak. <laughs> Rob had to use the Atkinson's toilets for a very long time. I think yeah, might have already might been have mentioned. might resized your ring. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and now we're heading home. But before we head home, mm-hmm. I'd like to update. So, obviously, our number one listener, Greg... Yes. He's, he sent a fair few tweets in. Okay, have you got them on your iPad? You've got your iPad out, but you've got no connectivity, Helen, because we're in town. Oh, no. Oh, no, I haven't got any connectivity. But basically, what Greg seems to well, no, do... No, we should go home then and read them out, shouldn't we? Shall we? Yeah, because this, this, this entire section is moribund if you don't have an internet well, connection. Well, I can kind of remember what he said, though. No, let's do it for proper. <laughs> Otherwise, you're paraphrasing it until, well, let, let me drive home and we'll, we'll speak to you in about, uh, well, it'll, it'll be an instance but on I the podcast. I feel like the whole podcast should be from a car. We can always do it on the drive using the Wi Fi <laughs> connectivity. Okay, let's do that then. Okay. We'll see you at car park number four. <laughs> Where are we, Rob? We are at car park number four, Helen. Where's car park number four, Rob? It, we're back at home. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to do it on the drive, weren't we? We were. We're going to do it on the drive. I've just put this down because we can't hold it because it makes a racket. Okay. Let me just support it on something here. There we go. We were on the drive, but we're not on the drive now. It was too sleety, wasn't it? Was it was too sleety, too cold. Right. Fire away. But I still think we could call it a car park special. It's a car park. Yeah, it's still a car park special. We've done three out of four locations that have been car parks. Yeah. Or in parked cars. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's still a car park. But well, anyway, we're home. The car is parked outside and we are now inside. And Helen's almost lying down. Yeah. And what... Um, What's what? So we're upstairs. What's what's Granny Bean doing downstairs? Right? Granny Bean is downstairs. I think folding my underpants. And now, what did you just say? Pardon? What did you just say? What did I, I think she might be folding my underpants. Do you want to hear what Greg has asked us? No way. Right. What's Greg Super Listener been been asking? The latest from Greg Super Listener. Dear Agony Couple. Ah. Is there ever a time when it can be considered appropriate for a man to fold his mother-in-law's knickers? Has Greg rigged our house with cameras? <laughs> That's my first question. Greg, please come clean. If you've got, if you've rigged cameras in our house, please do. <laughs> Transparency is all I ask for, my friend. Isn't that weird? Um, How so, many emails have you and Greg had back and forth uh, in well, the past week or so? We, as we know, Greg like live tweets, doesn't he, as he's listening? Yes. And responds to things that we say yes, as so, he's listening, with an expectation that we can we can know exactly which bit of the which podcast he is listening to. Do you want to see what? Do you want to know what he tweeted just before that? So is this from last week's podcast? He must have been listening last week, yeah. and these are his tweets. All now right. you figure out. This is a quiz, okay? Okay. Can you figure out which bit of last week's podcast he is listening to? Just putting my head on uh, for the, our listeners who are listening now, does that mean they've memorised last week's podcast as well? Yeah. Right, well, I'll have to flesh out the answers then to see if it makes sense. <laughs> okay. So, he says... Yeah. Yes. No idea what he's replied to there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> And then here's another number two question two. Yep. He question says, two. Yep. Four months and not a day less. <laughs> so what was the time period of something? Is that what we were I talking don't about? Know what we're talking about. <laughs> and then he says, "I'm here, currently near Chard. We're cool, Helen, but I'm wondering what a thirty-six pound fifty pile of celebrations looks like. I think he thinks that I've spent all my PayPal income." On the uh, oh Shelter right yeah City on celebrations yeah um, well and he also sent us a private message which said feel free to sell more copies of the CD oh right he's given us that go ahead right as long as his is the sat only signed original version okay well Greg's will be the only original site it will be the number one pressing and you, the have first you said pressing that, Rob? it's going it's in the post this <laughs> afternoon isn't it. It's going this afternoon, it Greg. It is coming, Greg. It is coming. It's on its way, pal. Um, but yeah, so we could we could see if anybody else wanted. Yeah, well, to if buy you buy any more, if you want a copy of the date night charity uh, podcast single last Christmas, all you have to do is tweet us, which is available. Yeah, tweet us date night pod. at date night pod or Facebookers at date night pod. Robin Helen's date night on Facebook, isn't it? It's Facebook. It's Robin Helen's date night is it? on Facebook. Or yeah. email us. At Robin Helen's date night at yahoo.co.uk. Dot com. Shit! It's Robin Helen's date night at yahoo.com. Or if you put money into our PayPal um, forward slash me dot me slash PayPal <laughs> date night thing. Good luck with that. If you donate to the podcast anything over £10, I think you get a free copy of the CD. Why don't we burn them the last Christmas and the Christmas befores? Oh, yeah. Killing in the name as well. So yeah, they're like, both. A, like an EP. You get both if you donate to the podcast more than £10. Come on, folks, we'll make, do we'll, it. We'll make you up like a, a, a an official EP. Yeah, but it won't be signed. Greg, you're the only one that's got the signed version. The, I think you have to sign them, but Greg's is the original. The original Christmas single, because of which there's only one in the pressing. Is there? In there. But I think... All right. You have, you have to sign it, wouldn't you? Oh, I don't know. Because they're homemade. So they're effectively signed, aren't they? We'll just do a, a like a bad signature, Greg, on everybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do a smiley face. It's a minefield. It's a minefield. <laughs> so what's that? Right, Greg's gets sent off, and it's a, and if you if you donate more than ten pounds to the podcast, ten pounds yeah. or more to the podcast, we will make you up a signed EP for every single person who donates at um, the PayPal donation site, which and all of those links are at. <laughs> On the uh, Twitter to, handle. Can you tell them we're making this up pod. as we go along? Oh, for Christ's sake, <laughs> it's so disorganised. Also, please, if you've made your way through any of this bullshit, please, <laughs> please give us a five-star rating on iTunes. I, I wouldn't give this five stars. I though. would. I'd give it five stars for effort. 
Five stars. Um, yes, yeah, so five stars on iTunes, and that pushes it up the charts and means that iTunes one day will have to capitulate and put this podcast on new or noteworthy or popular or something like that. Well, definitely not new. No. We're old and haggard. Notorious. <laughs> Notorious. I've there you it. go. It's paypal.me forward slash date night pod. That's paypal.me forward slash date night pod. There we go. So that's a lot of things to get on the end of. Now, I am heading down to London shortly, aren't I, to start yeah. rehearsing Upstart Crow. Went down last week for the read-through of all the scripts, which was a lot of fun. And um, I stayed, because it was a flying visit, I stayed in a budget hotel, because I had to be up very early the night before, didn't I? You were very proud of your budget hotel, yeah. I found. And originally, until we all destroyed that idea in yeah. your head. Well, I, I, I mean... I, don't, I think, it, well, I think yeah. it speaks for itself. We recorded... What what occurred after Rob had found his budget hotel? Yeah. And we recorded it for you, dear listener. So, Granny Bean, what? what do you think a hotel that costs £49 in... Um, oh, will be like... Because <laughs> I have memories of King's Cross when it was the seediest. The most appalling area. But they've done it all. It's not as bad as that now. So what it? do you think the hotel's going to be like? Yeah, but we what? can't mention the name of the hotel on the podcast. Can you? It's not fair on them. A, a oh, hotel the po- oh. in King's Cross, Central King's Cross, for £49. He's just trying to make a practical decision. Well, I do. You see, because I'm from way back, when King's Cross was the most undesirable, seedy, squalid area possible... And people did unspeakable things in hotels in King's Cross. Well, for a hotel but in now, London, for £49, I think there may be some unspeakable things going on. Rob has booked himself in t- for this evening to a hotel that prides itself on allowing you to check in um, <coughs> in the afternoon and then check no, out at midnight. Well, all hotels let you check in in the afternoon, don't they? And of yeah, course, you can check, check out whenever out you want. Midnight. Well, it says 11 o'clock. But you mean midnight the 11. same day? Midnight the same day? Yeah. So people are booking it up for afternoon, evening events. So you basically, both of you suggested I book myself into a knocking shop. Well, something <coughs> a bit dicey, I oh. would say. Yeah. So, well, what I've said, no, what but I King's Cross is the same exactly. now, it's changed. Is it? What King's I've Cross suggested is a, is a yeah, better well, area. And the reviews are apparently good. So, what I've suggested Rob does is ring the hotel and the receptionist, who's clearly not going to be a drug dealer or a prostitute, he can say to the receptionist, look, I'm coming down and I just need a good night's sleep. I just want you to tell me the truth. Is, is like, are there loads of prostitutes and drug dealers in your hotel? And they might tell him the truth. They okay. might say, oh yeah, it's a bit... So, so I'll ring the What back. kind of drugs do you want then? Oh, I used to work <laughs> round King's Cross, you see. That was good God, Jane, probably... keep that to yourself. <laughs> My, my patch, you know, up and down the Holloway Don't call it a patch, that makes it sound worse. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my patch, this is my patch. <laughs> I work this patch. <laughs> but it's a long time ago It that. is, and time's changed. And it? it has changed, and they've cleaned it up. Yeah, so. well, let's see what the hotel says. So I have to ring, what, so hang on, let's just get this straight. So I have to ring him and say what? That just say, I've booked... It sound a bit like Alan Bennett. Just sound, yeah, really innocent. Hello. And just say... I've made a booking... I've um, made a booking yeah. for this evening, and I really, and somebody's just told me that um, it's a bit that they, the area might be a little bit um, seedy. Seedy. Okay. I just wanted to check that the hotel oh, isn't. You can't say that. But what if they think counterintuitively that I'm a seedy person, just checking that the seediness yeah, going on? They go, oh, don't worry about that, sir. It's really nice. What kind wink, of wink. seediness do you want? No, 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 you can't do that. But I'll make this call just because you're telling me to do it, but I feel uncomfortable about doing it. As your mother in law. Right, I'll let Jean ring. (laughs) Will you make the call for us, Jean? But what could I say? Say that you're ill and you can't make it. No, 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 he doesn't want to cancel it. No, I can't cancel it, otherwise I lose all the money. He just wants to check, he wants to actually really check if the the hotel's going to be full of prostitutes. That's what he needs to know if the hotel is actually (laughs) a brothel. That's what we need to find. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it will be because I've stayed in the the Gresham, which of course I'm very happy to recommend to any of the listeners. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll you know I'll put a word in for you. 
if you're happy to share a bathroom with uh, 10 different builders, that's okay. <laughs> Happily put a word in for you. I mean, I don't know how much weight my name carries at the Gresham, but uh, it's very central. It's about 55 yeah, to 60 pounds really, a night. What was the sign on the door? It said, please use the toilet properly. <laughs> that's what it said on the toilet door. So, Jean, do you want to ring on my behalf, Jean? And in fact, you're the perfect cover, Jean. You up for this? Yeah, wait a minute. Let me. I've got to think it's what ringing. I'm going to say. It's no, ringing. But what, what about, okay. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Here we go. Granny Bean, you're an absolute legend. Well, Here yeah, because we you know that King's Cross is a bit... Yeah, because you worked there in the yeah, past. Yeah, good, good, good. So you're just going to have to sit near it, Jean. <coughs> I don't know what I'm going to say right. here. Leave, no. leave it still. Oh, good morning. I wonder if you can help me. Yes, I, hi. I, I, I found your thing online, mm -hmm. your hotel online. Now, I have a problem here. I'm an elderly lady. Right. I used to work in King's Cross. And, okay. you know, the area was not of a good, good repute, if you know what I mean. Yep, so yep. I'm wondering if your hotel will be suitable for a lady in her 70s on her own. I can walk upstairs... But um, do you think it will be suitable for somebody like me? Okay, yeah, for, for just for you? Yeah. All right. We can offer you a double room in... Give me a second. Oh, for, for when you're looking for? I'm looking for it at the weekend. Yeah, we can give you a room in um, ground floor. A room in the ground longer. floor at the weekend. Yes. You, you know what I'm trying to say to you, though, don't you? That I understand. Because of the, um, what used to go on in the King's Cross area. Uh, I completely understand, yeah. And, but you think I'll be safe there? Uh, yeah, it, uh, you will be safe there. OK, love, thank you so much. No problem. No I'll problem, get no. back to you. Thank you for thank talking. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. He sounded quite a nice young man. I think you're going to be fine. Yeah, now. I think I'm going to be fine now. <laughs> I think that's I think... laid all of our worries. <laughs> that's that's laid all of my worries. <laughs> I think that was the yeah. perfect, yeah, perfect way to go down. To Brilliant. King's Cross and be confident. <laughs> yeah, it's got the <laughs> Granny Bean seal of approval. I'll come. I might and come I... back a crack at it. <laughs> and the thing is, King's We've Cross gone is a very suitable, good area. Well, it's, it's an a, up and coming area central. now, Jean. It is. Yeah, it's all being gentrified. I mean, I, I'm working, I'll be working in that area. I walk up and down those streets every day. There's yeah. a university nearby. Yeah. You know, it's... Well, when we come and visit you, this could be the hotel for us all. <laughs> it could be. Maybe they have a family room. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to be fine. I think it's going to be okay. Right. Well, I will report back when I get there. Yeah. Thank you, Granny Bean. Most interesting. Most interesting. Hi, how are you doing? How is it? Well, it's fine. I, I felt a little bit guilty when the very polite gentleman on the front door welcomed me and said everything was not a problem. I said, may I look at the room first? He said, it's, that is not a problem. The room is, is small, but it's well. I'm on the first floor, uh, so I'm quite near the stairs, so I will be able to hear any traffic going up and down the stairs. Um, yeah. The bed is a double. It's a low double. I don't know whether that's... It's low specifically to make it easy for people to have sex on. I don't know. Um, the the floor, as they said in the in the as they proudly stated in the thing on the website, is laminate. <laughs> Did you get an individual um, lilac biscuit? I have. Uh, I'll tell you. I've got two tea bags. I've just opened the first one. I've got some Grandma Wild's OT cookies. Yeah. Um, I've got. Uh, Three remaining um, milks and uh, some coffee and some complimentary um, lube and sheaths. Other than that, completely normal. <laughs> um, but it's out of the sheets. Um, I, I, I peeled them back and uh, I don't see any pubes. They look freshly laundered. Pardon? Stains? No, no stains, but they are white. There's no, doesn't appear to be any sputum on the curtains and they're dark in colour. Um, the the bathroom smells very very clean. So yeah, I think I think I think it's all fine, babe. Have you seen any of the other clientele? No, not yet. No, I haven't. I haven't. But they could be thinking the same about me. If it, it's if it, early, isn't it? Eight thirty. It's early. I did just pop the kettle on. Uh, sorry, the, the pop the kettle on, pop the TV on, 
before you called, and, and it's gone straight to Channel 5, uh, which is a programme about diets and superfoods, and yeah. the, the lady on it is a, a pole dancer, if that makes... If, if I don't know whether that's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. Can you see out onto the street? I can see out onto the street. Do you want to tell me what I can see? Yeah. I can see a wall with some um, some kind of spikes on it to stop people climbing over. Or oh, humping against it. Oh, humping oh, against it. I'm on the first floor. Just uh, drain pipes and um, a few flat roofs. Okay. Yeah, but I've locked the window, don't worry. Well, <laughs> underwear? No, 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 no. Oh, I haven't checked in the wardrobe. Completely empty. And, and what would you say, better or worse than aggression so far? Oh, a street ahead, Helen. Absolutely. Would you, would you take the family there? Do you think we should all stay? I don't think this room's big enough for us all to stand in, but um, certainly, I, so far, it, it, it's, it's, it's a different lead to the Gresham, Helen. It's definitely, I don't know how many stars the Gresham has, but this one definitely should have at least an extra star. Wow. Because I've got my own bathroom and shower. Wow. Yeah. Well, do you think you might stay there for uh, some of the filming? We'll, we'll see. We'll see, Helen. <laughs> 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 so there we go it turns out uh i didn't get um uh, molested yeah and i didn't end up uh um addicted to heroin no we're not quite sure what disease you might have got like what do you get bed bugs i've probably got yeah bed bugs no don't no i've not got bed bugs that's disingenuous to the hotel it was scrupulously clean, and uh, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend it you as a place to stay... You wouldn't take me and the kids there. I wouldn't take you and the kids there. But, but yeah, you'd go again? Yeah, but I just don't want you meeting all my new friends. But would you stay there again? <laughs> uh, if I absolutely had to, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week, dear Until listeners. Until next week, well, maybe next week. Yes, there's going to be next week. For, you've got to show willingness, Helen. <laughs> I mean, if you can't be asked tuning in for next week, how can they, poor sods? No, it's because you're away. We, I you know, we'll only have two days. We might not be asked. We'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk for, we can talk for half an hour to our dear friends on the podcast. To find that in a weekend, can't we? We'll try. Oh, you know, maybe you never know what's going to happen in life, do you? <laughs> Speak to you next week, listeners. Bye. So unprofessional. <laughs> The fact that you're lying down. <laughs>